Welcome back, guys, to the Ottawa Senators Rebuild. We are through five seasons of the rebuild. The first four seasons, we couldn't make the playoffs. We kept losing on the last day of the regular season and missing out. Year five, however, went a little bit differently. If you haven't watched it, go back and watch it. But we lost in game six of the Stanley Cup final, which obviously hurts. Our first time getting to the playoffs, and we ran through the first three rounds, but could not beat the St. Louis Blues. Now we're going into year five's offseason, and we've got a lot of decisions we're going to have to make in terms of contracts, the draft, if we're going to trade anyone, all that kind of stuff. So, guys, thank you for watching so far. If you haven't watched already, go back and keep up with it, man. You guys have been loving it so far. I've been blown away uh, by the support and feedback of the series. That being said, let's get after it. Year six of the Ottawa Senators' rebuild. All right, so here we are. Again, Kaprizov, 26 points in 23 games. We'll take one last look at just, uh, you know, how the team went. The regular season point total, is Kachuk leading it with 73, was actually kind of stunning, uh, considering the fact that we had a powerhouse team. Hamilton with 26, who should have won the Conn Smythe if, he was a, if they were able to win. Bennington won it. Stutzel with 23. Bedard, who should be very close to a 90 overall player now. So it was just a balanced effort all the way throughout. And then in net, I mean, Wallstad at a 900 save percentage and 3.09 goals against. That's probably what did us in, especially in that Blues series. But I digress. Let's sim to the draft and see where we're at. As again, this is a pretty um, crazy offseason. So the Blues winning the Stanley Cup. We'll do one quick look at the award winners as well. As the lottery results, Vegas goes from 2-1, to one, Boston from 4-2, to two, Florida 6-3, to three, Nashville goes from 1-4, to four. yikes. So we are no, nowhere in there. We are out of the draft lottery portion of the rebuild, and we'll take a look at retired players. Backstrom, Taves, Kessel, Spezza, wow, Spezza was still kicking around, Parise, Pavelski, Wheeler, Burns, a lot of big names, obviously, we're year six now. So, uh, yeah, Latang, Weber, Hornqvist. Man, there's a lot of real NHLers here that are now done. In terms of goaltenders, Flurry, Quick, Varlamov at 37, Dubnik, Elliott, Kadobin. So, yeah, man, it's a lot of transition as we move through our rebuild. Backstrom can now be a coach of the Sharks, Wheeler, and Kessel, both for the Vancouver Canucks. Did we lose anyone here? No one from Belleville, anyone from Ottawa. It does not look like it, so the coaching staff stays together. And I'm okay with that, considering, you know, how well they did. I'll take a look at the award winners uh, for this past season, just to kind of a recap. The Blues win this one uh, as the Tampa Bay Lightning, three out of the last five, unbelievable. And they actually won the first year that we simmed as well, so five out of the last six, four out of the last six, unbelievable. President Trophy went to the Flyers, the Campbell went to the Blues, the Ottawa Senators, our Ottawa Senators, won the Prince of Wales, and we'll go to individual awards. Sagan won the Art Ross Hart Memorial went to Sebastian Ajo, the Detroit Red Wings. The, Jan the Norris went to Kale McCarr, who has won it multiple times. Then we Actually, no, sorry, that was his first year winning it. My apologies. Lady Bing goes to Tyler Sagan. Uh, we've got uh, Calder goes to Stranges of the um, Columbus Blue Jackets. Bedard won it last year, so we did have someone win it. Conn Smite to Bennington. Vesna goes to Connor Carter Hart. The Jennings goes to Wallstead, so he does win the Jennings. Bill Masterson goes to Pellick. And the Jack Adams goes to Roberts of the Dallas Stars. The Selkie to Barkov, who has won it a couple times now. Ted Lindsay to Ajo. And the Maurice Richard to Greentree, who was a second overall pick, I believe, in the second year of uh, this of this sim. So uh, an impressive performance all the way around. And now it's time to decide what's going to happen at the draft. And I just want to take a look at the contract situation. Let's see who's expiring. I believe it's a lot. All right, so Colin White, uh, he is uh, probably on his way out. Uh, Johnson, our uh, defenseman that we signed, depends how much he wants. Does he want a, an extension? He does not want an extension. Five mil for an 84 overall 21-year-old medium low elite is probably worth it. The, uh, Norris, he wants 3.2. Sorry, 3.8, my apologies. That's probably too much. Tierney's going to go. I have follow. And then a lot of AHLers. Actually, we might we might be in okay shape. Oh, it's Wallstead. That's tough. Yeah, because he is going to want, yeah, 8 point. No, he's going to want 9.275. Oh, my goodness. So that is where it's going to be tough. We are going to have to figure something out here because, obviously, that is a majority of our cap. But we're not going to re-sign White. So we might be all right. We'll figure it out. Um, we might be able to... Mm, 
I think we'll see. All right, let's go to the draft. I don't know how what picks we have. Let's see. Uh, we have pick 92. Uh, let's just take a look at the draft class real quick. And, yo, so, Lars Sunquist. A lot of elites at the top. And nothing crazy here in the middle parts of it. Nothing that I've... Oh, there's a fr low franchise enforcer for the Ice Dogs, imagine. No one that I've... Wow, look at that. Ryder Mapletoft. Yeah, no one that I'm super stoked about. Like, again, we're at a stage now where we really don't need anyone. So we can just sim to uh, our pick, which was 92 overall. And we'll go take a look at the round one and just see. Um, so McCabe went for an 81 meter medium elite overall center. Sunquist a medium elite. Any um, reaches? All of these are medium elite, so that's not bad. Top four, medium top four. Medium top six, that's tough. Um, but no one there. All right, so let's go down to uh, our pick, which I believe is in round three. And here. Yeah. The back end. Let's see if there's anyone we can pick. Maybe, but I doubt it. Uh, top nine. The scouts say they want them, but let's see. Any low elites? Not really. Any top sixes? Not really either. So what we'll do here is we will tr find a trade. To be honest, I don't want any of these picks. I'm okay with trading uh, Arizona Coyotes third rounder next year. Siegenthaler. Nope. Brendan Dillon, Vegas Golden Knights, set third rounder next year. I'm actually okay with that because they are bad. Okay, we'll do the same thing with these. See if we can get anything. Uh, 2006 round three from the Sabres. Yes. Okay. And we'll keep going here and just try and do the same thing. Uh, 2006 for the Sharks. Sure. And then lastly, we'll do this. Holy Mata. Yeah, nothing here. We can sim pick, and we will sim two pick. Nice. And we'll make our second last pick of the draft, see if we can find a stud. <laughs> uh, we'll take a shot on uh, Stanislav Sherikov. What a name, bro. Four years, five years? We'll go with Sherikov. Who knows? Uh, low top six. It is what it is. All right, so that's the draft. I mean, obviously, we're at the stage now where we don't really need to have a draft at all, to be honest with you. Uh, we'll trade picks so that we can make moves. Uh, but this team is all set. We've done our due diligence. Uh, re the AHL needs to be redone. Our coaches are all now, you know, getting up there. I honestly think I might hire... Hmm. Our AHL has been awfully tough, so I don't think I'm going to re-sign any of them. Uh, we will go to the scouts, though, and re-sign these guys real quick. All right, let's see how bad this is going to get. Okay, so right now we have got 8.735 in cap. And we have got uh, all expiring. So White needs to be re-signed. Johnson. The hard part is, is that, like, obviously we need to sign Wallstead. And he is wants all of the money. Literally all of it. So... We are probably, we might just, actually, the best play might to be just qualify him and deal with it after. In fact, that's definitely what we're going to do. We'll qualify. What does Gustafson want? Two years at two million. That's actually not a bad deal. Decord, I like him in the AHL, and he does want a, yeah, we'll keep him in the AHL. That's fine. And then all skaters, let's take a look. So what does White want? He wants 6.1. That's a lot because he was playing on our third line. Uh, Johnson's a little bit different because I do think that we should re-sign him. And he wants 5.9. The problem is that he does not want an extension. This keeps him to RFA. So 5.75. 7.75, sorry. Probably the play there. Okay. Norris is also a free. Er, hmm, that one's tough. Tyranny, what does he want? 1.1. He didn't even play for us. I follow. Wants two. I'm not going to sign him. Kapaka wants a one way, so it looks like he's done as well. Brown, he's been, and he wants a one way. All these guys want one ways. They're the AHLers um, that we've had on our team for quite some time. They all want one ways, but, you know, actually, we'll probably move on from him too. 20 years old. Bodden wants a two way, and we'll sign him for two years. Other than that, I think. We'll see where we're at after those. It's Johnson that I'm curious about. Okay. 
Bodden resigns, Decord resigns, Michael Johnson resigns. Okay, so that works out well. And we have got 3.8 million remaining. I feel like we should qualify Norris no matter what. That, do I want to give him that money? Tyranny's got to go. Like, these guys have got to go. Like, there's no there's no way around that. Um, but if we qualify him, let White go to free agency, he's going to get a lot in free agency. And he wants an extension. I liked having him on the team, but let's see. I won't have enough no matter what. 6.1, even if he takes the extension deal, it's 5 points. So there's nothing I can do with him. The other one that's kind of interesting is Gustafson. Because a two a two million dollar deal for him at 84 overall is a fine deal. So let's see where we're at. Alright, so Gustafson wants more money now. Uh now he wants more money. 2.1. I still think that's a fine deal. He wanted that 100 k All right, so we can go to free agency. And we're going to go hire our AHL coaches, too. Because they are they were bad, bad. Um, and we'll see if we can actually find a good one. I wonder if we can get an NHL head coach to take it. I doubt it. Is there any teams interested? He's 60. Fuka Fuji. Let's see. I doubt it. All right, here we go. Let's see the scenario that we're in right now. We got about three mil in cap space. Shabbat's a 92. Hamilton Stutzla at 89. Bedard's an 88. Kachuk. These guys will probably all go up, though. Um, hmm. All right, let's take a look at the free agents. So we've got, at the top, Aranak, Blad, Sher... Ooh, here we go. Boris Sherov. Six foot four. He was the third overall pick in 2022. That's a really good player, but he is an RFA. Yeah. Uh, Green Tree. Wow, he just won the Rocket, and they can't sign him either. Chikrin, who is a UFA. Hmm. Locked out. Do all of those first overall, pick, high overall picks, they're all looking. Owen oh, Power. How about says France, even though I made that Canadian. So nothing really here. Like I mean, we have to we have to find a way to trade out some cap anyway. So let's go and take a look at the cap hits that we've got that we don't want on the team anymore. Like in net, you know, we need to get Wallstead needs to be on the team. Like there's no, we need to find a way to fit him in. So let's take a look at these cap hits, okay? The so ten mil for Stutzla, I'm still okay with that. He's not going anywhere. Nine point five for Kachuk, nine for Kaprizov and Hamilton. Eight for so like those are a lot. Brandstrom at five point eight. Michael Johnson five point seven. Sanderson. Bernard Docker's an eighty two and making four. Beauvilliers making three point five. Norris three point two. Drake Batherson three point one at eighty two overall. That's probably who's got to go. It's probably who's got to go. So we'll find a team that wants him, and maybe see if we can get. What, what do you think we can get? A couple of, like a third and a fourth, maybe? Is there any pro players? Like, let's take a look. That we might be able to take. Matnin. What is he? Top, medium, top six. He's 20 years old. We throw in one of those picks. Hey, there we go. All right. All right. Let's take a look. What is. It's all about trying to sign Wallstead. That's our biggest problem here. And we just do not have the cap space for it. Uh, it's going to be tough. We're going to have to lose someone really good. There's just so many guys at the top, but like all of them are good. You know what I mean? Like they're all very, very good. 5.8 for Brandstrom kind of stands out for me, but I don't know who would replace him. Michael Johnson at 5.6, but again, I think... <sighs> do we just let it ride? Bernard Docker... He's a medium top four at 25 years of age, and I don't think he's going to go any higher. Maybe we get rid of Bernard Docker, too. I really don't want to, but... I mean, obviously, we're trying to keep the team together, so... I would love a second rounder next year. How about that? I'm trying to rebuild the stockpile. All right, there we go. That's not a bad deal, either. Okay. Getting there. We've got to sim through and see... First of all, if the AHL coach will sign. I already signed. Which is big, because that's a very, very good coach. Um, now let's go ahead, and we need AHL Associate and Assistant. 
And B minus is okay, but let's see if we can get one of these guys. Okay, now let's go ahead and sim through that. And we're going to have to deal with those RFAs in the future, but they should come down in price the longer we wait. So we just need that associate coach and then we're all good to go. All right, so we're going to sim through the off season now, and then we'll get to the beginning of the season and see what we can do about uh, our expiring RFAs and see if we can make a deal or not. All right, so here we are, start of year six, Kachuk, Stutzla, Kaprizov, Shane Wright, Bedard, and Greenway. And I'm still not certain on how I want to just orchestrate the lineup because obviously we could go like this. It's just that the uh, the chemistry obviously takes a pretty big hit there. Um, so I think we're going to leave it like that. However, Atu Ratty being an 85 overall, we let him cook in the AHL for a long time. And it turns out that that paid off in uh, spades here as he is listed as a center, but he's left-handed and only 60 on the draw. So he is going to be a left winger and he fits the third line with Josh Norris and Logan Brown. So like this is a gross third line, 88, 88, and 87. And then the fourth line, we're going to have to make some maneuvers here. Uh, also might have to move Bavillier. I'm not sure what I want to do there yet. Um, just because he's a fourth liner, obviously with the contract he has, it's not terrible, but then we've got Shabbat and Hamilton, Brandstrom and Sanderson, and then Johnson and Lassie thompson who's making the uh come up from the ahl um and we'll see how they fare our other uh, options right now are shane pinto and kurashev um to see if they can fit on the fourth line but it's just they really don't we do need a center though so abramov has got to go we're gonna trade him or maybe put him in the ahl i don't know formington does fit on this third line or on this fourth line which i'm cool with uh but bovillier he kind of does as well but there's two left wingers and Bovillier is a little bit older, and his cap hits a little bit higher. So I'm going to see if we can find some bona fide fourth liners. Um, and that's really it. In net, we've got to sign uh, and see if our goaltender will sign. As Jesper Wall said, obviously the big one there. Mad Sogard is going to go into the AHL, I think. Mm, probably as Gustafson's going to be the backup here one more season. Uh, let's take a look quickly at the AHL because, again, that did, our AHL team did not make the playoffs last year, which I was kind of stunned at. Akil Thomas, now 25, does fit the first line. Igor Sokolov, friend of the channel, he is going to stay here. And then Fabian Lysel, who I believe was a second rounder in our first draft, now 22, um, still just uh, you know trying to trying to grow him a little bit more. He's at 75 overall. There might not be much we can do with him, uh, but we'll we'll take a look as we go through the rest of the roster on defense. We've got Dimitri Semkin, uh, Nicholas Maloche, Ian Mitchell, Samberg, Mason Howard, and Dimitri Loktyanov. And, and again, we'll have to actually Loktyanov will definitely gonna have to resign we have to sign another defenseman here obviously because he is not uh gonna play on that team and then in net we've got decord and again we'll move down uh, one of our goaltenders once wallstad signs so uh let's see if we can get him to sign as right now uh in terms of contracts we've got 5.9 available and uh the thing is wallstad we were able to offer him because he is wanting a little bit less for a one-year deal so i'm gonna go ahead and sim and see if he accepts and bang, there he accepts. And then early January, we're going to look and see if we can make a roster move and actually um, sign him for a little bit more of a deal and not have to worry about that gigantic cap hit. So we'll go ahead and move him up. So what we're going to do is just quickly go through and see if we can find any AHLers um, that we can actually, you know, we've only got 41 contracts right now. Obviously have to find some defensemen. We're going to see if we can find some younger guys, maybe take a flyer on like Favory, uh, probably can go ahead and sign him as he's only 25 years old and wants a two year, two way deal. So I'm completely okay with that. So we're going to go through, sign some AHLers and potentially see if I can find a, um, a fourth liner that might fit. I mean, Bodker probably doesn't, but yeah, there just really isn't many options. Maybe Grimaldi, mm, not scouted. So we'll take a look and see what we can do. We're messing around with the lines. We've got Amadio, Pinto, and Sokolov with Kostelik. And then we've got Kurashev and Fabian Lizel, Ridley Grieg with Laco, who I was just able to sign with Riley Sutter. And then Davidson, Forsbacka, Carlson, and Reinhardt on defense. Semikin. Sem Sem I don't know. Why can't I say that? With Martin Favre, is a plus five. Howard with Samberg and then Galvis and Ian Mitchell. And then 
in net we've got mad sogard and joey decord so obviously all set there i really like it i think that this team should do a little bit better uh in terms of the ahl and see if we can't you know get them uh into the playoffs at least this year obviously because all of our prospects have kind of come up if we take a look now we put akil thomas up on the fourth line with formanton thomas and beauvillier and then logan brown norris and ratty so ratty comes up but darden right obviously we drafted early and then akil thomas we traded for um but yeah we're all of our prospects are kind of moving up so um we'll take a look and it looks like we're all set and uh man i'm excited about this year obviously we we came just short of winning the president's trophy the field of flyers did last season but we're two wins away from the stanley cup so uh this should be a big year and i'm ready to get started all right so we're gonna sim to the regular season and see where we're at and and i'm ready for this season i think that we are gonna do a lot of damage here both in the ahl and nhl we've got a big season to you know basically Come back from after just getting real close to the Stanley Cup. We'll take a look, make sure the captain's in jersey. So Shabbat's still our captain with Kachuk and Stutzla. I'm good with that. All right, let's let her fly and start saving through part away of the season. A few days away from the trade deadline, and we sit at 38, 16, and 7. Well in front of a playoff spot. We are going to make the postseason, but somehow the Florida Panthers are 42, 18, and 2. Three points ahead of us. But nonetheless, we'll take a look at our team scoring as Kirill Kaprizov, Kirill Kaprizov has 63 and 61. Stutzla right behind him at 62 and 61. Kachuk's got 56. Hamilton at 53. Shane Wright, Shabbat, and Bedard all right there at the 50 range. So obviously, our first line's still doing phenomenal. We'll take a look in net as well. As Wallstead, man, under 900 save percentages. So just not a good season for them. That's tough, obviously. I don't believe we have any rookies. Oh, we do. Atu Ratsy with 38 points in 61 games. That might be good enough for uh, leading the Calder. We'll take a look around the league because it's been a minute since we've had someone that's been in the running for the Calder. And Tarasenko's got 76. He has got a ton of points. My goodness. As we go down here, we'll see where our next scorer is. I mean... Yeah, there we have uh, got a balanced scoring team, but not a not a high octane one that's uh, got a few players carrying. But Hamilton close to uh, four points back of leading the Norris Trophy race. Same with Shabbat, they're right in there uh, in terms of rookie skaters. Wow, Kari Haikila was sixty three points in sixty games, a first round fourth overall in two thousand and twenty three. My goodness, and Atu Ratti obviously well behind him. Nonetheless, a very good season for him. Well, we'll take a look quickly now at the uh, at the roster. Actually, the AHL as well. 40-10-5. So the adjustments definitely worked. Holy smokes. Okay. All right, let's take a look. So Kachuk, Stutzel, and Kaprizov, it might be time to just flip these two, but they're doing well. So I don't know. I mean, like, we're, we're well out in front. I don't really know what else I want to pick up here. Uh, on defense, how is Branch from minus 11? That second pairing is just brutal. Maybe moving Shabbat down, but that pairing's been so good that, like, I don't know if I want to do that. And this has always been an issue. Is J Sanderson <sighs> minus 11? Lassie Thompson plus four. What's 26 points, too? Man, Branch has just not been playing well. We could go like this. Brandstrom stays at a plus three. Hamilton just comes down, and we'll see. I'm not a huge fan of that, but I'm curious to see if that kind of helps balance things out a little bit because, yeah, that seems to be our only issue. I'm um, curious to see what uh, expiring contracts we have. If there's anyone that like we need to get rid of in case we lose. Um, so Bedard needs a contract, but other than that, Josh Norris, we only have that one-year deal with. We, we qualified him. Lassie Thompson's going to need an extension, too. I should look at those extensions. Oh, Eric Stahl, I forgot, boys. <laughs> Eric Stahl, the third rounder at the low elite. Fabian Lysel as well, but Formanton might be one, but he's a fourth liner, so it's not like it's... Yeah, there's no one really that we need to get rid of. And what about goaltenders? Wallstead, too. I think, our, I think we're okay. Like, I really don't see any needs that we have to go out and get. Um... The one thing I do want to take a look at is seeing if we should go and kind of deal with the contract situation now. Like, 
that's not a bad offer at all, but we just don't have a lot of cap space next year. I wonder if he would take a deal like that, a 90 overall. I mean, 8.875. I mean, he might take 7.6 if that's the case. Maybe even, yeah, 7.65. And maybe he takes that off of that contract extension. We'll see. But other than that, I mean, Norris is going to go, and he wants a lot of money. This might be the last year of him. Lassie Thompson, three years at two. I mean, that's not awful either. But obviously, more importantly, what does uh, Wallstead want? 7.75. So we'll see if we'll see if Bedard resigns real quick. We'll go a day or two, and we might be able to see if he resigns. He does. He renews his contract, and we get a shutout. Bang, big win there. All right, so that's huge. Two years there at a cheap deal. Um, we'll take another look here. At the expiring guys, but, um, hmm. All right, so Norris, Thompson, Akil Thomas. Akil, Thomas can't want much. He does want a one-way deal, though. That's the issue. Shane Pinto wants a two-way. And you know what? I'm okay with that. Uh, getting these guys on two-way deals is huge. Davidson, does he want a one-way deal? Wow, I'm curious. I'm surprised that he doesn't. He's just going to be an ahl -er for life on our team, it looks like. Mitchell as well. And again, these guys aren't going to make the jump up to the NHL. That's fine. Anyone over 826 really doesn't grow, but I want the AHL team to be dominant, right? So until we get actual prospects to replace them, there's, you know, no reason. Al Sokolov, our boy, friend of the channel. All right, there we go. As that'll do that. Okay. And we'll worry about the other guys, too. The only one I'm really curious about is... Yeah, we won't have a lot of cap space for Wallstead next year. But we're going to lose Norris. So that's another 3.2. Hmm. I think we're good, guys. All right, we're going to sim to the rest of the season and see what happens and where we finish. I would be st I would, I'd be kind of disappointed if we don't win the conference at least, but here we go. All right, so the move to put Hamilton down... Obviously worked as we locked up first in the Atlantic and wow the Rangers That is insane again a Metro team just popping off last year. It was the Flyers this year They don't even make the playoffs the Rangers 122 points Obviously we're in second place to them my goodness, but uh, the regular season has ended so we'll find out who we're gonna play and it is the Buffalo Sabres. All right, so let's take a look at how our season went in terms of points and how that all shook out. All right, so Kaprizov leads the team with 86. He actually ties with Stutzla, so that first line still dominant. Shane Wright is 76 on our second line. Kachuk, 74 up on that first line as well. Hamilton still pots 70. Uh, can't complain with that. Shabbat was 69, so our two major defensemen still, you know, contributing immensely bedard only 67 points that i'm a little concerned like hmm. i'm wondering bedard's face-off rating up at 85 is great what's stutzla's it's 85 as well i might put him on the wing i don't know we've got some decisions to make Brandstrom with 54 adu ratty when his rookie season finishes with 50 points and anywhere down at the bottom akil thomas on the fourth line as a rookie 20 points no uh no complaints there in net and we've got a 46-win season, 90, 900 save percentage for Jesper Wallstead. So not great. 904 for Gustafson. So, again, not really all that great. Um, but we'll take a quick look at the entire league as we'll go skaters first. And McKinnon with 107, Tarasenko with 100. In terms of goals, we've got Green Tree again locking up that with 55 goals there. Um, so that's obviously impressive. Defenseman, we've got 75 points from Jamie Drysdale. Quinn Hughes back with 72, and Dougie Hamilton just behind him. So real close. And then rookies, 80 points from Kari Heikola. That's a crazy, uh, just an insane amount. Now, take a look at the playoff tree. We are going to be taking on the Buffalo Sabres, and we've got a battle of Florida, the Panthers, and the Tampa Bay Lightning. We've got New York and the Devils, and Carolina and the Columbus Blue Jackets. On the West, we've got this reigning Stanley Cup champion, St. Louis Blues, taking on the Jets, Colorado and the Oilers, LA Kings and the Vancouver Canucks, and then the Ducks and the Blackhawks. All right, guys, 
So our team is pretty much set. We're going to take a look at the Buffalo Sabres and how they shake out now in the 2026 season as the Sabres with Tatar, Eichel, and Aiden Madden, an 84 overall, Dylan Cousins up to an 88, Ryan Hart and Tomash Hurdle, who we did have, no longer with us, Jack Kapaka, who we also had, Nazem Kadri is the third line, Jesse Pugliarvi, Tage Thompson, Jared McCann, and Henrik Bjorkstrom, so a great team there, good depth on defense. Alexander Romanov, who I believe was a top pick, no, a second rounder, my apologies, Ristolainen, and then we've got Yoki Aryu and Darlene, who's a 90 overall. Gavrikov and Baden, uh, so a great job there. And I was thinking that was a creative player. That's just Romanov from the Canadians. <laughs> and then in Nets, we've got Uka Pekka Lukin in an 87 overall, but he had a brutal year with Ilya Sorokin backing him up. So we do have the advantage on the team. We'll take a look at just overall, so we'll go play a game real quick. And we'll see how uh, we shake out here. In terms of overalls, we're 96, 94, and 89, 93, 90, and 87. So we do have the advantage. But that doesn't mean anything. All right, guys, let's hop into our first game. We'll fast sim it again. Actually, the AHL, that's record-breaking. Unbelievable. We'll take a look at that after. All right, first game of the first round. Trying to get back to the Stanley Cup. And we are up 3 nothing as Brown, Brandstrom, and Kachuk pop off here. So a great performance and a great start. 16 shots, 7 for Buffalo. Pop in another 2, and it's Formington and Logan Brown as the bottom The bottom 6 is just carrying us here. And we complete the shutout as Norris, again, our bottom 6 just carrying in this one. Logan Brown with 3 points, Wallstead with a shutout, and Branstrom with 3 as well. That's a great start in Ottawa to our Stanley Cup run, potentially. All right, we're moving on. Game number 2, here we go. First period. It is 3-0 again, and there's the first. There's our top six. Shane Wright, Kachuk, and Thompson. There we go. They have four shots on goal. Through two periods, it's Lassie Thompson again. That's 4-0. And they finally get their first goal of the series, but Kapriz Kaprizov and Bedard will ice that one. 42-13 are the shots on goal. I don't know if I've seen a sim this dominant. Ever, as now these sends are just buzzing. We're up 2-0, going back to Buffalo. And here we go, game three, pivotal game. Can we take a stranglehold on the series? They finally get a lead as Tomas Hurdle won the power play. Ex-Senator, through two, it's still 1-0. And this one will end as a score of 3-1, 35-35 are the shots. Buffalo gets back into the series. So a tough L there, but we've got another chance. To go up 3-1, we obviously would love a split here. We don't want to tie and go back and force it, you know, at least a game six. So here we go. Let's see if we can eliminate it here. First period, it's Tomash Hurdle again. Revenge to her for him. Through two periods, we get it back. It's Shane Wright and Kaprizov, Barry, and it's 2-1. to one. Third period now underway. This one's going to end 3-1. to one. Formington ices it. And now we're up 3-1 in the first round against the Sabres. All right, so we're cooking with a chance to eliminate them at home. Here we go. Game number five in Ottawa. Through the first period, it's 2-1. Lassie Thompson, have yourself a playoff round. My goodness, Shane Wright and then Dylan Cousins will get one back. All right, it's 2-1 through two. Kachuk adds another, and now we've got a 3-1 lead into the third period. All right, it's 3-1 late in the third. We're going to hop in and see if these sends can send Buffalo packing. Here we go. 3.54 remaining on the clock. Kadri on the draw for the Sabres. And Stutzla for the sends. Here we go. Stutzla across the line. Nice deke in. And Lucan will play that one out. Across the line. Sends are buzzing. Under a minute to go in the third. Two goal lead, Kapaka now the other way, goalie's pulled. And a huge trip up in the corner. Shabbat pinned now, and they bang away at it. He come away with it, and here goes Bedard for the Sens, trying to ice it. Huge hit it in the neutral zone, and Kapaka now back into the offensive zone. 31 second shot on goal, Wallstead saved another one, and he comes up big. Dahlin pinned up along the boards by Kaprizov. Back out in front, Madden lets one go, and Wallstead, he'll hold on to that one. 20 seconds remaining. It'll be Bedard and Eichel on the draw. Goldie's pulled. 
Bedard wins that one. Back and forth they go on the breakout and they send it up. Here's Bedard into the middle. And Shane Wright is going to ice it with 11.6 remaining. These sends are going to move on to the second round. And there we go. These Senators celebrating at home as they move on to the second round two years in a row. Darlene and the Sabres left wondering what's next. Shabbat says, Eichel, how are you still in Buffalo, bro? Wallstead, he exchanged some words with Pekka Lukanen. And that's going to do it here in Ottawa. On to the second round. All right, guys, so that is where we're going to end it for this episode. Tune in next time to find out who we're going to take on in the second round as the quest for our first Stanley Cup heats up. Have a good one, guys.